Okay, Mr. Holcomb here again with another episode of Math Behind the Module. Okay, hopefully I don't make the same mistake that occurred in class because the teacher's edition has an error in it and I came to the realization during class and had to fix it, so it's been fixed. Example, so what we're doing in this lesson, it is lesson 19, we're going to be comparison shopping, unit price and related measurement conversions. Classwork. Analyze tables, graphs, and equations in order to compare rates. And our first example says to create a table using equations, or creating tables from equations. So the ratio of cups of blue paint to blue paint to red paint is one to two, which means for every cup of blue paint, there are two cups of red paint. So I would say number of Blue paint, cups of blue paint, how about that? Cups of blue paint, not number of, let's call it cups of blue paint. And cups of red. So if I have one cup of blue paint or two cups of blue paint or three cups of blue paint or four cups of blue paint, I need to find out how many red we have. So we have this equation up here and it says in this case the equation would be red equals 2x blue. I do not like that. We're going to get away from that. We don't want to use an x for times because x is going to be used as a variable and that looks like 2x, 2 times x. So I'd rather see R equals 2B, where a number next to a variable is assumed that we are multiplying. B represents the amount of blue paint, and red represents the amount of red paint to make a table of values. So I'm trying to find red, so I'm going to take 2 times what I have in the blue column. 2 times what I have in the blue column here is 2 times 1, which is 2. 2 times 2, 4. 2 times 3, 6. 2 times 4, 8. Okay. And there is taking the equation and making a table of values from it. All right, number two. All right, I don't know how to pronounce your name, so I'm going to use the Italian pronunciation of vowels. Miss Sifle is a librarian who really enjoys reading. She can read three quarters of a book in one day. The relationship can be represented by the equation days equals three quarters books, which can be written as D equals three fourths B, where B represents the number of books and D represents the number of days. This was the error in the book. And I am, you probably have, you might have put it in your notebook wrong. So if you have, let's fix it now. But you should have fixed it in class when I caught it. So the book said to have a number of books up above, but I disagree with that because I want to have number of books down here. Okay, and up here I will do number of days. We are not tweeting here. That is not hashtag number. That's not hashtag of days. Hashtag of books. So number of books, number of days. Okay. She can read three quarters of a book in one day. So in one day, she can read three fourths of a book. In two days, she can read three quarters times two, which is six quarters, which is one and a half. So in two days, she can read a book and a half. In three days, it's going to be three quarters times three, which is nine quarters, which four goes into nine, two, with the remainder of one. So in three days, she's reading two and a quarter books. And then finally, day four, three quarters, times four, cancels, and then we get three. So in four days, she can read three books. She's not reading a whole book in a day, so it's got to be less than the number of days. All right. Exercise one. Okay, so what do we have here? 
before even reading this question, I'm looking at this. Brian has a table of God. Shanice has a craft on a carbon print. Okay. So we're comparing a table to a graph. All right. Now let's take a look at the question. Brian and Shanice are both training for a bike race. Want to compare who rides his or her bike at a faster rate. Both bikers use apps on their phones to record the time and distance of their bike rides. Brian's app keeps track of his route on a table, and Shanice's app represents the information on a graph. The information is shown below. Okay, so here's our information. And the question says, at what rate does each biker travel? Explain how you arrived at your answer. Well, if we want to find the rate, at what rate, then that's our K. And this is X, and this is Y. And K equals Y divided by X. So I can't use the zero, so let's go to the next one. Number of miles Y is 75 divided by 3 equals 25. If I take 150 divided by 6, I still get 25. And that is miles per hour. It is cranking. 25 miles per hour on a bike is crazy fast. Okay. So we found out how fast he goes. Now we have to find out how fast she is going. So it's really hard to see on the screen here, but I'm looking for integers, values, and I find one right here at 2. Let's go up just a bit. Let's go okay. So my point two is right here. So it's the value x is two and y is thirty. So that's the point two comma thirty. Remember x comma y. And there's my ordered pair or my point. And if k equals y over x, then it's thirty divided by two, which is fifteen miles. Per hour. Okay, so Shanice is going 15 miles per hour. At what rate does each biker travel? We answered that. Brian is going 25 miles per hour. Shanice is going 15 miles per hour. Explain how you arrived at your answer. Well, I would say I found the rate by dividing the number of miles by the number of hours. Okay, I'm not going to take the time to write that, but that's what I would have said. B. Shanice wants to win the bike race. Make a new graph to show the speed Shanice would have to ride her bike in order to beat Brian. I'm going to pause here, recalibrate, so I'm correct. Okay, I'm back. Hopefully, hopefully it's better. So the first thing I do when I'm graphing is I label my X and my Y. And let's see. I want to go faster than him. So I've got to have a rate of more than 25 miles per hour. All right, so in order for me to graph that, I would maybe do 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, 55, and let's not go too crazy. Let's say she can go 30 miles per hour. So if I do that and um, let's see. If this was 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30, 40, 50, 60, and there's my hour, or one hour. Let me look back up at what they used. Number of hours, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So let's not get too crazy here. I can just do 1 hour, 2 hours, 3 hours, 4 hours, 5 hours. All right, so at one hour, let's just say she rides more than 25 miles an hour, which is 30. Obviously at zero, she's not gone anywhere. So if my graph would look like this, at two it would be 60, which is just up here. So my graph would be like that. So as long as my rate of 
rate of change is going to be faster than his, so it's going to be steeper than that. I'm not going through this point down here. I went up through this point here. That shows that she is going faster. All right. Number two. Braylon and Tice both work at a department store and are paid by the hour. The manager told the boys they both earn the same amount of money per hour. All right. So here's the manager. It's telling them they both earn the same amount of money per hour. But Brave and Tice don't agree. They each keep track of how much money they earned in order to determine if the manager was correct. The data is shown below. All right, so now we have Braylon who has given us an equation. And M money equals $10.50 times hour. Okay, how much money he makes? He makes ten fifty an hour. And so the M stands for, I don't know, amount of money per hour. I don't know why they use the letter M. But anyway, I'd rather see like a P for paycheck or something. It is $10.50 per hour because ten fifty represents the money. So anyhow, he's making ten fifty an hour. It tells us right there, K equals ten fifty. Because we have an equation, y equals kx. And in this case, they called y m k1050, and x is h. All right, so in our tables, x is on top, y is down here, and what we and k equals y divided by x. Okay, so I would say Braylon, there's no work to involved here, it's just identifying k. Braylon makes... 10.50 per hour. Okay. Now we have to find out how much. Let's uh, the first place. All right. So k equals y over x. Well, y is 34.50. Um, let's make it easier and use this one here because decimals aren't fun. 69 divided by 6. 6 goes into 6 once, 6 goes into 9 once, with a remainder of 3, 6 goes into 35 times. All right, so 69 divided by 6 is 11.50. So then I would say, twice makes 11.50 Okay, so if I were these two guys, if I were Braylon, I could that because my manager said I make the same as Tyson and I don't. And a 40 hour work week, he's making $40 more than me. Unless he's taking me out to dinner, uh, they aren't making the same. Was the manager correct? No. Tyson makes a dollar an hour more. Okay. Claire and Kate are entering a cup stacking contest. Both girls have the same strategy. They stack the cups at a constant rate so they do not slow down at the end of the race. While practicing, they keep track of their progress, which is shown below. Okay, so here's our x axis. Here's our y. Number of seconds is x. Number of cups is y. All right. So if I say y equals, oh, I'm sorry, not y. No, we want to know our rate, so that's k. k equals y over x. Well, if I look at this point right here, that is the point 1, 5, which is xy. So that equals y5, x1, which equals 5 seconds or five cups per second. Number of stacked cups. Five stacked cups per second. Okay. Then we look over here at this equation. And it says, Kitty says cups stacked C equals four times T time, which is seconds. So there is our K right there. So K equals four, which tells us that Kate stacks four cups per second. Well, uh, Claire 
Claire stacks five times per second. So Claire can do one more cup per second. She's faster. So what, we're, what rate does each girl stack her cups per practice session? Five stack cups for Kate and Claire, four stack cups for Miss K. B. Kate notices that she's not stacking her cups fast enough. What would Kate's equation look like if she wanted to stack cups faster than Claire? Well, in order to stack cups faster than Claire, her rate has to be faster. Her rate was four right here. It's got to be more than five. So let's make the rate five. How about six? Six is more than five. So I would say C equals six T. That's it. There's the equation. Oh, put it in the wrong place. So, this is the answer to this. All right. So, there you have it. Lesson summary. When comparing rates and ratios, it's best to find the unit rate. MBK. Sometimes we use R for that. Comparing unit rates can happen across tables, graphs, and equations, as you saw in this lesson. Okay, go do your...